Over the course of the past year, this nation has faced a series of highly publicized, adverse interactions between police and members of the public. These interactions have had dire and occasionally deadly consequences for the individuals involved. They've also served to erode public trust in the police, making it harder for those officers who are upstanding and professional to do their jobs. Early intervention can help. By addressing uh, risky behaviors such as an over-reliance on force and risky situations such as an emotionally compromised officer staying on shift after a traumatic event, police departments can get to these officers before these risky situations bloom into adverse interactions with potentially catastrophic consequences. To pursue this goal, we, uh, we partnered with the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, CMPD for short. CMPD's current system for uh, uh, detecting officers who are at risk of these types of adverse interactions is called their Early Intervention System, EIS. And it works uh, in a kind of a, hu a heuristic manner. Um, when officers exceed thresholds on certain kinds of events in a limited time period, they get flagged for intervention at the discretion of a supervisor. The events that are tracked, uh, such as complaints, use of force, uh, pursuits, uh, were decided upon by the commanding officers of CMPD based on their intuitions about what might be predictive of these kinds of adverse interactions. Unfortunately, uh, this system doesn't work all that well. <laughs> um, here is a plot of 10 randomly selected uh, CMPD officers who had some kind of adverse interaction uh, during the years 2013 through 2015, um, from as serious to an unjustified use of force to as less serious as a, a complaint, from a sustained complaint from a member of the community. Uh, each bar here represents a different officer, and the height of the bar represents how many of these tracked event types that officer was flagged for in the period leading up to their respective adverse event. So what you can see is that for most of these officers, they were nowhere near the threshold. You know, as far as CMPD knew, they were not on track to have an adverse event of any type, and then they did. To address this shortfall, we uh, are using a large amount of data coming from CMPD. We have daily activity logs, such as arrests. We have employee information, such as demographic information, educational attainment levels. And finally, we have case report logs from their internal affairs department. When complaints come in, uh, we know whether they're uh, considered to be sustained or unsustained, for example. For use of force, we know whether it was justified or unjustified. Uh, our basic approach is to use these, uh, this data to construct features of officers and situations, uh, and then to use a supervised learning approach to determine which of these features are predictive of adverse outcomes as identified by the CMPD Internal Affairs Department. This is a representation of CMPD. The red dots represent the officers who will uh, have an adverse interaction in a typical two-year period. The gray dots represent the officers who will not. Each dot here represents about 60 officers. Ideally, a model would get all and only those officers who will truly have an adverse interaction in this period. Unfortunately, this is a hard prediction problem. The current CMPD EIS system is not very good, as I've mentioned previously. It captures way more officers who will not have this kind of event than those who will. By using a more sophisticated model and a broader range of features, we're able to effect a modest but substantial improvement on this result. However, the, this type of threshold model that the CMPD system represents is the state of the art, the current state of the art for police departments in the US for detecting officers who are at risk of these kinds of adverse situations. We've shown here that we can effect an improvement on this type of model by using more features, by using more sophisticated models, and we believe that by scaling up our efforts even more in terms of the amount of data used, in terms of the sophistication of the models used and the, the set of features generated, we believe that this kind of approach could be used nationwide to much more accurately pinpoint those officers who are at risk of these kinds of events. Thank you.